Are you hungry? I know I am. Let's get cracking. What's up guys, my name is Jacob. This is Conscious Cooking and today we are making salmon. Now, there's a few things that I want to touch on that I'm going to be going through in this episode. The first one is where you get your salmon from. Now, I did speak about this to a certain degree in the tilapia episode and the importance of having sustainable seafood sources. Now, today I'm going to be talking about salmon. In the tilapia episode, I talked more about sustainable farm-raised fish and which types of fish are better suited for farm raising. Fish like tilapia, trout, and catfish. Now I'm going to be talking about fish that you really should only get them if they're wild caught. With, you know, obviously there will be a few exceptions, but primarily I'm talking about, you know, larger fish that have developed musculature. I'm talking about fish like tuna, salmon, cod, swordfish, things like that. I could mention a couple others, but you get the idea of what I'm saying. You want something to be wild caught if it's known for having a good strong flavor. Now for salmon, the reason that this is important is because salmon live a very interesting life cycle. What happens is they're born typically upriver. And then, as they mature, they swim out into the ocean where they get big. And once they're matured, they swim back up the same river that they were born and lay their eggs to restart the next life cycle, and then they die. Not the point. The point is, is that they do a lot of moving around. Nobody knows exactly how much they move, but they cover a lot of of water. They cover a lot of water in their life cycle. A lot of water that truly cannot be replicated by farm raising. Because no matter how large of a tank you have, you're still not giving them the amount of time that they need and the correct diet that they're supposed to have in order to develop the flavor and the correct proportions of size that they're supposed to. Same thing, well, tuna and swordfish are on a whole different level because they are fast moving and they can become absolutely enormous. Especially swordfish. Swordfish grow well over 100 pounds, I believe. But you definitely want to make sure that your fish is from the right place, uh, farm raised or wild caught. You also want to make sure that it has never been frozen. The reason for that is because frozen fish will have a different texture than truly fresh fish. And the reason for that is because when you freeze fish, the water inside the cells of the fish crystallize. That's what happens when you freeze water. It turns to ice, which is a crystal. And then when you thaw it, Basically, what has happened is that ice becomes very jagged when it freezes. So it pokes holes in all of the different cells in the fish, so a lot of that moisture will leak out when it thaws. And that results in a change in texture because your fish has damaged cells before you even cook it. So you want to make sure that your fish has never been frozen. You want to make sure that it is correctly farm-raised or wild-caught. The other thing, if it is wild-caught, which, depending on the type of fish, it should be, make sure that it is caught from a sustainable fishing source. That's also very important. There are a lot of places in America and the world in general where certain types of fish are being overfished and they will run out. The world as a whole is generally considered to be overpopulated. There's about 7 billion of us and the more people there are, 
the more food we have to make to feed them. And the more food we have to make to feed them, the less food we have, we're able to get. So make sure that it's from a reliable, sustainable fishery. Because most of these places, most people don't have access to fish that just came off the boat. If we're being perfectly honest. I would rather you get frozen and then thawed wild caught fish than never frozen farm raised fish if it's something like salmon or tuna because the conditions that those fish live in not only is it you know not good but it's also not I'm trying to think of how to phrase this right it's it's not going to produce the correct flavor, texture, and overall, sometimes it doesn't even look right. If you buy farm-raised salmon, a lot of times you'll see that it's kind of like pale in comparison to wild-caught salmon. But today we're going to be doing salmon. It's just for me tonight. I'm not cooking for my family. It's going to be just for me. So there's only one filet, so watch closely. I'm only going to be doing things once. And... I have some pasta from last night or something like that that I'm going to use as a side. I'm going to go over that with you guys a little bit more towards the end. But we're also going to make a sherry sriracha glaze to go on the salmon to give it a little bit of extra flavor and a little bit of a kick. But that's going to be it. Let's get on into it. Alright folks, so the first thing that we're actually going to do is start assembling the glace or glaze or sauce. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But this is going to be a sherry sriracha sauce. And the reason we're doing sherry rather than balsamic, because I know you've heard of balsamic salmon before, a lot of restaurants do it. The reason we're going with sherry is because I like the flavor that it has with sriracha better than balsamic goes with sriracha. And I really wanted that little bit of kick. That's what I was in the mood for today. So we're gonna go with half a cup of sherry vinegar and yes there's gonna be a lot of glaze there's going to be a lot of it and we're gonna use displacement here to make things a little bit easier on ourselves we're going to go just up line by line each of these lines is equal to one ounce so the next thing we're gonna do is add one ounce of sriracha then we're going to add one ounce of honey. And then we're going to fill it up to one cup with water. And you're probably thinking, why are you adding water to something that you're going to be reducing? Well, here's the thing about water and when you mix things together. Water really helps all of the flavors meld because it bonds and breaks bonds with everything else in there. Now I'm going to mix this up in here just a little bit before we add the water, just so that it'll be a little bit looser. But we're going to add two ounces of water to this little mixture. So there are the two ounces of water. Now there's only one more ingredient that's going to be going into this, and that is garlic. Now, if you are a fan of this program, you are aware that I like garlic quite a bit. I'm a big fan. I love garlic and sriracha together as well. So, the way that we're going to reduce this is obviously in a pan, put the high heat to it, let it come to a boil and all that stuff. But as for getting the garlic into it, I have two paper plates here. Things are about to get violent. I have some garlic cloves that I did before. I just peel these before. I like to do it in like big groups. I get a bunch of garlic. I'm gonna go with, I don't know, six cloves, half a dozen. Or let's go with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cloves of garlic. One for each ounce of the sauce. But we're gonna put these here in the middle Put the other plate on top. And now, now that we have everything there, 
the violence begins. Now, here's the thing. I like garlic. I don't like large chunks of garlic. I like small chunks of garlic. Because large chunks of garlic don't taste very good. But large chunks of garlic do. So, put your now mashed garlic in here with everything else. And then we shall strain. Well, we're not really going to be straining it because we don't need to. What we're actually going to end up doing is we're just going to be spooning the sauce on there and just. Try your best not to get any big old chunks of garlic. But, here's what we're going to do with this. And I'm going to put it back on camera. Here's what we're going to do with this. We are going to reduce this to about half of what it currently is. And that's going to take a long time. The best way to go about doing this is to use a large pan not giant, but just larger, to get this into a thin layer, because that way it will boil away faster. That's the thing about reducing sauces. Most people like to use large pan, or large pots, and reduce it very slowly, but this is gonna be a lot faster because I'm hungry. That's the only real reason behind this, so I'm gonna get that done. I don't really feel the need to show you guys how to reduce. I've shown you that before. It's not very complicated. It's just waiting until it has boiled away to about half of its current stature. But with that, we're going to get on into the salmon. All right, folks, seasoning for the salmon should be simple. Oil, salt, pepper, done. So all you need. Now, similar to the halibut, we will be removing the skin after we're done cooking. You don't need it. It doesn't really do anything. So, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. And honestly, I'm gonna add the oil to my hands rather than to the fish. Because I don't want any extra oil, any more than I really need. If you find a pin bone, take it out. You can choke on those, they're not good. So just oil up the fish, rinse off your hands, dry them off, and then we're going to add salt and pepper. So pepper. I like a really good heavy covering of seasoning because we're only really seasoning the one side. We're going to cook this you know, on two sides. It's not going to stand up straight on, so you can actually see it. It's not going to stand up straight on the flat sides. It's just not going to. So we're going to cook it for about six minutes on each side on about medium heat. We're going to start with the skin or the scale side, and then we're going to flip it after. But let's go get on to cooking it. All right, folks, it's salmon time. And things are going to be really simple, just salmon in the pan, six minutes, flip, six minutes, done. You just want to let it rest. I'm going to put in a little foil pouch when I let it rest. And I know you can't see this, but the sriracha sherry glace is off to the side, boiling, reducing, getting nice and awesome. The pan is definitely hot enough. I'm going to add the salmon. I love that sound. I love that sound. I'm going to wait six minutes, flip it, I will be back. All right, folks, it has been around six minutes. I'm going to flip the fish. Your best friend for this job, like I said. Two forks. Get in frame. Two forks. Leave the skin on for now. It's not going to really move right now. As you can see, it's still kind of glued on there. The other reason we're going to leave it on right now is because we still want the residual heat cooking this thing from the top.
top side as well. Right now we have most of the heat coming out from the bottom. However, the skin and this side of the fish is still really, really hot. So the heat is going to resonate out of there and continue cooking from that side. Granted, much less than the bottom, but still, it's there. All right, folks, time is up. I have a little piece of foil over here. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Put the foil down, put the salmon in the foil. I'm gonna take the skin off real quick before we do that. It should come off in one nice piece. Grab the salmon, put it down, and we're good to go. We just need to let this rest for about five minutes, and while that is going on, I'm going to explain to you guys why we're eating salmon today. That's good for you. All right, guys, so while the salmon cools, I really wanted to explain to you why we're eating salmon. Now, as I explained in the trailer for this channel, this is a healthy eating channel. I'm not gonna be eating anything that isn't considered, let me put it a different way. We're not gonna be eating things here that are blatantly unhealthy. Occasionally, yeah, we're gonna cook some treats because everybody needs a treat every now and then. But primarily, this is going to be healthier foods that people with potential medical conditions or dietary restrictions can enjoy. It's not just for people with Crohn's, it's not just for people with ulcerative colitis, or one of the many irritable bowel disorders. It's not just for people with allergies. Maybe it's just somebody who wants a healthy meal that they can eat and enjoy. That's all that it has to be. It doesn't have to be anything super specific. Salmon is one of the absolute best fish that you can eat. It's high in B vitamins. It is high in a lot of different minerals. It is a phenomenal source of omega-3 fatty acids, and it's very high in protein as well. So, my doctor, like my regular physician, not my gastroenterologist who takes care of my Crohn's disease, my doctor in general says that I should be eating fish like salmon, like tuna. Um, I know that there are other... I know that there's another fish that he told me. Basically fish that are high in protein and high in omega-3 fatty acids. I should be eating those three times a week, which I do. Most of the time, it's tuna, because the tuna that I get is less expensive than the salmon because it's frozen. It was frozen, I thaw it, I sear it, I eat it. Not, it's very similar to the tuna sashimi that I did which technically is not sashimi, I know. Sashimi is supposed to be raw, I know. I don't like completely raw tuna, I don't. And if you do, don't cook it, you don't have to. Nobody's forcing you to. I like my tuna cooked rare, I, that's the way that I prefer it. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all there is to it. But salmon is very healthy. It's a great source of protein, which is why I started to eat it. Um, we used to have salmon every Friday night in my house uh, with my parents. My brother wouldn't eat it because my brother doesn't eat anything that comes out of the ocean. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But the other big part about it is that when I was growing up, like when I was a lot younger, I'd say up until I was about 15, I had extremely high cholesterol, really bad problem with that. So every day I would have to eat at least something that was high in the omega-3, 6, 9, whatever fatty acids. So salmon became a really big part of my daily routine, or at least my weekly routine. And that's when I really started to get into fish, which brought me into getting into, you know, making sure that the fish is sustainably farm raised, etc., etc. But I wanted to highlight that for you guys because, you know, when you talk about chicken, it's lean protein. Everybody knows that. But with certain other fish, people aren't necessarily as aware of it, such as with salmon. A lot of people don't know that 
aside from the omega-3s and the protein, salmon is also a phenomenal source of B vitamins, as I said at the beginning of this, which is something that you need to be aware of because B vitamins like beta carotenes and things like that are extremely important. They help with your eyes, they help with your skin, they help with your hair. They're just, or is that vitamin A? <laughs> it's not the point. The point is it's good for you. Enjoy it. Just make sure that you get it from the right source. Please. Please. Because with the danger of higher mercury levels in fish that aren't gotten from reliable sources, I really just, the most important thing here is that the salmon you eat is from a good, reliable, reputable source. That's the most important part here. But with that, we can go on and get into plating. All right, folks, it is time to plate. Plating is simple. I have a nice little mountain of our pasta right there. If you're wondering what's on it, olive oil, salt, pepper, parmesan. That's it. Super simple. I will be doing an episode about pasta because it has definitely become an important part of my diet. But we're gonna open up this foil pouch, carefully place the pasta, like so. You want it to ever so slightly be resting on top of the pasta. We're gonna place salmon on the pasta. Test the fish, the fish is delicious. And now it is time for the final part which is of course the sauce. As you can see, the sauce has thickened up considerably. We're just going to get some of this up on there and brush it on. The heat of the salmon will start to break the sauce up and let it, you know, liquefy a little bit. But we just want to brush that on there. And that is going to be it. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. It is very much greatly appreciated. But with that, I'm going to get about. Thank you all once again for your support. Make sure to leave a So, folks, that is going to be it for the plating. I hope you all enjoyed. I am about to tear this up. I am very hungry. But make sure to share this with your friends, colleagues, coworkers, whatever you want to call them. Try this out at home. Let me know how it turns out for you. Like I said, I'm going to go tear into this because I am very hungry. But thank you all once again for all of your support. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. But with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go eat. Thank you all once again. I will see you all next week. Goodbye.